superstar Dolph Ziggler. AJ South. What is going on, guys? Brett Alive back with another video, and today in this video, we are going to be going over WrestleMania 37, night one and night two. We are going to be starting off with night one. I'm going to give you the results, the winners, the losers, my thoughts on the matches, the moments. So without further ado, this is going to be the review of WrestleMania 37. So let's freaking do it. Starting over here was the women's tag team turmoil match and probably the weakest match of the night, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, if, I, if I could name them off the top of my head, it was Naomi and Lana, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, the Riot Squad, Carmella and Billy Kay, as well as Natalia and Tamina. Big match going on here. Uh, it, it was okay. I mean, there were some decent moves. Mandy Rose on her way out because, of course, this WrestleMania was delayed by the rain, which was freaking insane. She slipped on her way down to the ramp. Oh, my gosh, I cracked up, man. But, dude, I couldn't believe it. And then they got down to the ring, and then, obviously, you would pin somebody, and then another team would come out. And then, ultimately, it, it ended up being Tamina and Natalya who picked up the victory. So they're going to be facing Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler on night two, which will be featured in this video. So you guys will see the winner for that. More than likely, Shayna and Nia. But pretty interesting how it's Natalia and Tamina. They've been on a streak uh, ever since they, you know, become a ta uh, tag team together. Moving over here, it was AJ Styles and Omos versus Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, the New Day for the Raw Tag Team Championships. I thought it was awesome how Biggie was able to introduce the New Day. He got on stage with them, uh, and yeah, he's like, "Don't you dare be sad." This I, I missed it, man. It was like super cool to hear him say that with the New Day brothers right next to him. And uh, but yeah, it wouldn't work out too well when almost got tagged in. So basically, AJ Styles was I would say AJ Styles was getting beat down a decent amount in the beginning of the match. But then he tagged Omos, and it was downhill from there for the New Day. Almost dominated. He was wearing, like, a like a tight freaking like, dress shirt with no sleeves. It was weird. It had, like, buttons in the center. Like, it, okay. I was expecting a cooler attire from him. Uh, but, yeah, it was some basic stuff, wearing all black. But, yeah, right when he got tagged in, he just wreaked havoc on the New Day. Ended up slamming Kofi Kingston down with a nice powerbomb maneuver. And uh, they became Raw Tag Team Champions. So, that's insane. I think that makes AJ Styles a Grand Slam champion. I thought that was a pretty good match. I enjoyed it. Moving over here. Um, yeah, it was the main event of the show. Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, and I think people are just way overhyping this match. Uh, I've been saying it ever since they named it the main event. I'm like, well, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, it's gonna be good, but like, what? Yeah, Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, SmackDown is championship. It was a good match. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Bianca Belair used her hair one time along the side of Sasha Banks' body, and then it lashed her, um, and it made, like, a scar on the side of her body. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what the heck? Um, but, yeah, she got taken out with that, and then Bianca Belair was able to hit the KOD 1-2-3 and pin Sasha Banks. It was a good match, but I wouldn't really consider it the best match of the night. Uh, people were just saying, 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5 stars, best match of the night. Oh, my gosh. I was like, it was okay. I mean, yeah, it was a good match, but... Like, I wouldn't say it was best of the night. But, yeah, it was uh, good for Bianca Belair. She did pick up the SmackDown as championship. Not bad. Moving over here, it was The Miz and Morrison versus Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. As you guys know, I cannot stand Bad Bunny. Uh, Damian Priest, honestly, I wish he got more in this match. I feel like it was way more about Bad Bunny and The Miz instead of Morrison and Damian Priest. It still could have just been a one-on-one -on -one because, literally, Miz... And Bad Bunny were working so good together because, like, I could tell that they've been practicing. That's for sure. Because uh, Bad Bunny did some pretty freaking insane moves on the outside, off the top rope. Couldn't believe it. Uh, but, yeah, in the end, it ultimately, obviously, with Damian Priest and Bad Bunny, that picked up the victory over Miz and Morrison. It was a pretty decent match. I wouldn't say the best of the night. But, uh, yeah, it was a pretty decent match. And I thought it was pretty funny how uh, Morrison and Miz came out to Hey, Hey, Ho, Ho. Their little hop-hop song with a bunch of freaking bunnies running around. I made a little joke. I'm like, Oh, watch this. AEW Superstars is going to be under those bunny costumes. They're going to pop out, and then they're just going to go wreak havoc on WrestleMania. But no, it didn't happen. But I just thought it was really funny. Um, but And then Bad Bunny did his per uh, entrance on a freaking semi-truck, which was insane. Uh, but yeah, that wasn't bad. Moving over here, it was Cesaro versus Seth Rollins one-on-one, -on -one, a match that I knew was going to steal the freaking show in this match. We got attention to detail, hard-hitting maneuvers, <laughs> controversy amongst the superstars a story that was told not bad between these two men ultimately culminating here at wrestlemania cesaro was able to hit the swing 22 times i believe uh or was it 20 I it was somewhere around 20 um but yeah and then after that 
He hit Seth Rollins with a gotcha neutralizer. Boom. Yeah, we saw so many new moves in this match, dude. It was so freaking cool. I love this so much. If you didn't see it, I definitely recommend watching this one. Um, but yeah, in the end, Cesaro was able to pick up the victory, which good for him. That's like his big WrestleMania moment there. Besides, I'm the John Moore Battle Royal Trophy at WrestleMania 30. But yeah, still, I think that was a really freaking awesome match. Definitely my favorite match of the night. I really enjoyed it. Uh, moving over here, it was Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon steel cage match. This match was pretty decent. Uh, we saw Shane McMahon tear the side of the freaking steel cage down to pull Shane McMahon back into the freaking cage because uh, he was about to he was about to win. He was about to hit both feet on the floor, about to win, and then Braun. Tore that cage down and pulled him in. Um, but yeah, and then ultimately they both got on top of the steel cage. And then Braun Strowman, he just sent Shane right off the top. Flip, boom, hitting that mat so hard. I felt so bad for him. He's definitely going to be feeling that. Oh, yeah, it was freaking insane. Uh, definitely not as crazy as the cell moment at WrestleMania 32. Um, but yeah, this was still freaking insane. I would never have the guts to do it. Uh, but yeah, and then after that, Braun was able to hit the running power slam, pick up the victory, and then basically just said, this goes out to everybody who was ever called stupid. I'm like, okay, that was actually kind of cool. Not bad, not bad. Moving over here, uh, yeah, and I really enjoyed that match. Moving over here, it was Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre opening match of the show, of course, before the rain delay, which was, oh my gosh, I was so irked by that. Um, but yeah, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, WWE Championship. And as you guys know, I thought for sure Drew was getting this. I thought for sure he was going to freaking get the WWE title back uh, and have another reign as champion. But no! It was a good match, by the way. Hard hitting, awesome acrobatics. Honestly, like it, it was a pretty hard hitting slugfest between these two. It was pretty good. Um, but yeah, Bobby Lashley up in the end, he locked in the hurt lock, and I'm like, okay, Drew's probably gonna break it, right? He gets him close down to the mat, and the ref calls for the bell. I'm like, oh my god, Drew McIntyre's out. He passed out to the hurt lock. I couldn't believe it. And then Drew held the title up. I'm like, oh my gosh, you should have seen that. You should have seen the crowd's freaking faces. They couldn't believe it either. They thought for sure Drew was winning, just like me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I guarantee Drew wins. But no, he didn't. I couldn't believe it. It was still a really good match, though. And hats off to Bobby Lashley for retaining his title. I think Roman Reigns is going to do the same thing at night two. Again, I haven't watched night two at the filming of this part of the video. But yes, guys, that was night one. Now we are going to jump into night two. But before we do, one out of five stars. One being the worst, five being the best. I'm going to give this uh, night one a solid three out of ten. Uh, three out of five, sorry. <laughs> three out of five. This show is going to get a three out of five for night one. We'll see what I give it night two. And continuing the WrestleMania 37 review with night two of WrestleMania 37. I will make sure to leave my thoughts at the end of it, but uh, yeah, that was pretty dang good. Not gonna lie, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go through it. Same thing. Tell you guys what happened. The results without the do. Let's freaking do it. Starting down here was Randy Orton versus The Fiend to open the show, and this one I was very, very disappointed by. Well, first of all, The Fiend returned as the regular Fiend, not the Crispy Fiend. He he wasn't burned anymore. He was healed. He had the regular mask, regular pants. I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened to the Crispy Fiend, dude? Still really hope we get a figure of that. Um, but yeah, he appeared in a jack-in-the-box for his entrance. I thought that was awesome. And then he jumped off of that to start the match on top of Randy Orton. But yeah, and then they got going. And right when it seemed when it was starting to get going, Alexa Bliss was sitting on top of the jack-in-the-box, blood coming out of her mouth, distracted the Fiend. Randy Orton was able to hit the RKO and win the match. And I could not believe it. I'm like, wait, why did Alexa Bliss just distract the Fiend? She literally distracted him so then he could lose. I could not believe it whatsoever. Over. But yeah, Randy Orton was able to pick up the victory. This was probably my least favorite match of the night. Uh, I just did not like the way that they did it. I don't know if it's over between these two. I really hope it is. Oh my god. But yeah, I thought this one could have been way better. But still, uh, yeah, it's whatever. It was the opening match. It was okay. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it off there. Over here, it was Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler going up against, of course, Natalia and Tamina, who won the turmoil match on night one. Didn't really work out for them too well in this tag match. Of course, we saw Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler win this match. Tamina looked pretty good in this match, and the crowd was behind her. I really enjoyed that. This match was really good. Well put together. I thought they did a great job. Uh, like I said, Nia Jackson and Shayna Baszler did pick up the victory, but I gotta say, Natalia and Tamina did pick up, uh, put up a pretty good fight for the tag titles. I don't think it's over for them either. I definitely think they're gonna get another future title opportunity. Moving over here, it was the Raw Women's Championship match. It was Rhea Ripley versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship match. This was, this was, this was okay. Honestly, not better. Not as good as Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship, but still, this one wasn't bad. Uh, we did see 
Obviously, you guys can see her in front of you. Rhea Ripley pick up the Raw Women's Championship by hitting her finisher on Asuka. One, two, three. Honestly, good. Asuka was a really boring champion. She didn't really, she didn't really do anything with the title. Honestly, she didn't even. I kind of forgot that she had it. Sometimes I'm like, man, this is disappointing. But yeah, glad somebody new has it. Rhea Ripley. Hopefully, Charlotte can return. They could renew their rivalry for the Raw Women's Championship this time. I think that would be epic. But otherwise, yeah, that match was just okay. I think it took a long time to get get going. You know what I mean? It took just way too long. But yeah, it was all right. Moving over here. I was a big fan of this match. Sheamus, Matt Riddle, United States Championship on the line. I thought for sure Matt Riddle was retaining this. Um, but yeah, we saw Sheamus. I really felt bad for Sheamus. He was going for a white no white noise off the top rope, and he was supposed to hit it, but he slipped off the top rope. Uh, it would have looked so cool. But still, I love the idea what they were going for. Um, but yeah, Sheamus, in the end, Matt Riddle was going for like a, like a springboard off the ropes, caught him with a bro kick in midair, and he actually kicked his face. Matt Riddle was bleeding from the mouth. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was wicked. This was one of my favorite matches of the night as well. I loved this match so much. I'll be, and then we saw Sheamus pick up the victory with that wicked bro kick. I thought it was freaking epic. Moving over here. This match was literally booty cheeks. We saw freaking Big E go up against Apollo Crews in the drum match. They didn't use one drum the entire time. They used one table, steel stairs, and kendo sticks basically the entire time of this match. Uh, right when it looked like Big E was about to win the match, after he moved off the table, Apollo Crews got sent through it, went for the big ending, hit it, and then Daba Kato comes in. Do you guys remember that idiot from freaking Raw Underground? Oh, I was like, really? Why? So I guess Dabakato is Nigerian now, and now he's going to help out Apollo Crews. I was just so mad about this. I'm like, why didn't you just give, e give Big E the victory, dude? Come on. But yeah, Dabakato, I guess, is going to be in the corner of Apollo Crews. And honestly, I was a bigger fan of Apollo Crews by himself. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a big fan of him with somebody and him just being his goon, uh, similar to AJ Styles and Omos. Um, but yeah, that was just okay. Apollo Crews is the new Intercontinental Champion, though. That's pretty crazy. Moving over here, it was Sami Zayn versus Kevin. Kevin Owens one-on-one -on -one with Logan Paul on ringside. Honestly, I wish Logan Paul was on commentary. I think that would have been pretty cool. He was just sitting next to the commentary desk with no headset on. I'm like, what the heck? Oh, um, yeah, this was a really awesome match. I really enjoyed it. Quick pace, hard hitting, acrobatics involved, uh, some storyline. Obviously, this is a rivalry that's literally been going on forever, uh, ever since like Kevin Owens turned on him at NXT when Sami Zayn won the NXT Championship that long ago. That's literally how long this uh, story's been going on. But yeah, this is literally amazing, amazing match. In the end, we saw Kevin Owens pick up the victory over Sami Zayn and then Logan Paul hopped in the ring and he's like I have mad respect for you KO I have mad respect for you goes to shake his hand and what I thought of right away if you guys were on the live stream I thought of Machine Gun Kelly uh, I think it was in 2015 Kevin Owens is like I'm not accepting handshakes anymore Machine Gun Kelly goes for a handshake and then he gives him a dirty look and that's literally just brought me back to that moment and uh, yeah and then he took out Logan Paul with a freaking stunner dude I'm like oh my gosh that was epic um, but yeah I really enjoyed that as well I thought that was great moving into the main event Edge Roman Reigns Daniel Bryan for the Universal Championship this was really good uh, another just hard hitting quick pace matchup oh my gosh just so epic we saw Edge I'm, oh, no I'm sorry Edge on the steel stairs. Roman speared him off the stairs. Roman sent Dana Bryan through the announcer's desk. In the end, Edge... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it was Edge. Edge slammed Daniel Bryan's head into between the chairs to eliminate him out of the equation. But then he was too late. Jey Uso helped Roman Reigns get Edge a little disoriented enough for him to hit the spear. And then Roman Reigns retained the Universal Championship. Yep, just like I said, I'm like, you know what? Roman Reigns has looked way too dominant lately. No way he's losing that. And your boy was right. It was a really fun match, so I really enjoyed it. And I cannot wait to see who faces Roman Reigns next. And who's his next rivalry, dude? I think Edge and Daniel Bryan are going to feud now. Um, and maybe Roman Reigns goes his separate ways. I think that would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, guys, that was uh, night two and night one of WrestleMania. Night two is going to get a four out of five for this show as well and in the end to rate the entire show out of 10 I'm going to give the entire show an 8 out of 10 I thought it was a really good show I enjoyed most of the matches a decent amount of them were disappointing I thought The Fiend was disappointing Big E was disappointing and then there were some from Mania 1 which I was disappointed about the women's turmoil uh, but yeah other than that I thought most of it was really freaking good so uh, let me know what you guys thought about the shows down in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time Bread Alive out.